What is up guys, David Elon here today. We're going over minimum domino rotations for equal row. So this was a popular, um, very popular Google question, as you can see here. Um, I actually picked this for my Slack channel because we were discussing Google questions. So I'm gonna be going over that today. So the description reads, in a row of dominoes, A of I and B of I represent the top and bottom halves of the ith domino. We may rotate the ith domino so that A of I and B of I swap values. Return the minimum number of rotations so that all the values in A are the same or all the values in B are the same. If it cannot be done, return negative one. So <clears throat> uh, one important thing to note is we're just returning the minimum number of rotations. So we don't actually have to rotate the dominoes. We're just returning a number. We're not returning the swapped um, array. So we don't have to return an array. So that makes it a lot easier. Um, so as you can see here, um, they matched up all the top row. So it's all twos. And it took two rotations. And here, I guess you can't do it. Yeah, you can't. So there's only four scenarios we need to check. Um, an important thing to realize is that the value that we're going to be matching is going to be either in A of 0 or B of 0 because it has to be in all of the dominoes on that on a single row. So it's either going to be an A of 0 or B of 0, the target value we're trying to um, swap for. So there's going to be two for A of 0, two scenarios for A of 0, and two scenarios for B of 0. On the two for A of 0, we're going to be checking to see if we need to swap. We're going to be comparing A to A of 0. And the second one is we're going to be comparing the B elements to A of 0. And then vice versa for B of zero. So we're comparing A to B of zero and B to B of zero. Um, those are the only four scenarios we actually need to check. So that makes it a little bit easier, not easier, but um, that's that's like the a trick or a hint, I guess. Um, so I created a function to calculate if we need to um, swap the swap the dominoes. So and we're going to pass in three parameters. So in target, this is the going to be a of zero or b of zero. Um, that's the value we're trying to match the rows to. And then we're just going to pass in our two arrays. Oops. So in a and int b. I can't type. All right. <coughs> So then we're going to create our number variable. This is what we're going to return at the end. This is going to be the number of swaps. Um, I should just name it number of swaps. It makes it more obvious. And so let's we have our main for loop for int of i equals 0, i less than 8 dot length. It could be v dot length as well. They're dominoes, so they're their exact same length. i plus plus. So <clears throat> if um, the first if test case we're going to do is if both if a of i and b of i do not equal the target then it is not possible so we re need to return negative one but up here we're going to be using the math.min function so we don't want to actually return negative one because negative one would be the min um yeah so Let's do a of i does not equal target and b of i does not equal target. Um, and if that's the case, we return. So we're going to use a placeholder value. We're just going to return integer dot max value. And in the function above, we're going to use a ternary operator to check to see if the min swaps equals integer dot max value, then we're going to return negative one. Else, we're just going to return min swaps. So min swaps equals math dot min. That's how we're going to code it up there. And then just right here, we have to return num swaps. I actually didn't finish this because there's an else if statement. So else if a of i. If a of i does not equal the target, then we need to swap it. We, uh, um, if a of, if we get past this if statement, then we know that either a of i or b of i equals the target. And if a of i does not equal the target, well, that's what we're comparing 
it too. So we need to swap. So we're going to do all we have to do is increment swaps. We don't actually have to swap. Um, and if else, if it doesn't hit either of these, this if statement or this else if statement, that means B of or no, I'm sorry, A of I matches the target, and we don't have to swap because it's already in the right place. Um, so yeah, that's this entire function. That's how that works. And then up here, we're going to just call the min swaps function twice, and we're going to pass in our four scenarios I mentioned or earlier. So we're going to do A of zero is going to be the target up here. Um, a and then B and minimum swaps A zero again and A and B <coughs> or no B B and A I'm sorry so one important thing to notice here is although this is um, labeled A in our function we might actually be passing the B array into the A so when we call this function b is actually a and we're checking if so imagine this says b instead if b does not equal target then we actually have to swap it so all right and then we just need to do that two more times basically and minimum swaps Oh, it's B of zero this time. These are, this is our other two. Uh, it's actually going to be min swaps. So we're updating min swaps, comparing it to the old min swaps, and this one. Or we're comparing the old min swaps to this, the value of this function call. And then let's do it again for the last scenario. So B zero. Last time we just have to swap B and A, and then we just need to return min swaps. But because we're returning, um, because we're returning integer dot max value, we have to check for that. So if it returns integer dot max value. We're using a ternary operator. If it does, return negative one, else return min swaps. And the reason for this is because if one scenario doesn't check out, then um, it's going to return negative one, and that what another scenario might actually work. So. Um, we not we, you know we might not be able to match a of zero but we might be able to match b of zero so that's why we want to do that and so this accounts for all four scenarios and let's just run it hopefully that made sense I hope my explanations are getting better um, trying to work on it see it works so that's how you solve that it's o of n runtime just because we have one for loop and I believe I don't I think it's constant runtime so it's O of one or not runtime um, memory usage so it's O of one and that's about it thanks for watching guys I'll see you in the next video